Hello again. And you're back here because you're looking for some more help in completing your lab activity. So I want to get right into some of the nitty gritty details here of the lab activity dealing with dog breeding. So if you're on this page and you need some help, you're in the right place. Let me go through it step by step with you and this may help you out, okay? Step one says, select four traits types you desire for your dog and circle them on the table on the next page. Let me show you what I mean. So on the next page, which is page 186 in your book, I'd like you to make a change first. And the change I'd like you to make is this. Under the tail fur, change the fur to length. Make it tail length. And instead of shaggy, make it long. So long or short tail. Now, the four traits that you should be choosing from include the fur length, the fur color, the tail length, and the eye color. Those are the four traits. And what you should be doing here in step number one is selecting one of each of these four traits. So for your fur length, do you want long or short? circle one of those words. For your fur color, do you want black or brown? Circle one of those words. For your tail length, do you want long or short? Circle one of those words. For your eye color, do you want brown or blue? Circle one of those words. So that's what you do for step one. Reading on, it says step two. Now, Select a male and female parent from the available parent dogs from the table. Again, on the following page, page 186. So based on the traits or the characteristics that you selected in this first section, here are the male and the females. There are three males and three females for you to choose from. You should be looking at their genotypes, the genetic makeup for each of these categories of traits. And based on the selection of traits that you desire, you determine which of the three males and which of the three females, one of each, which one do you think would make the best parents to give you the greatest possibility of producing the offspring with the characteristics that you selected in step one. So that's what step two is all about, selecting the most appropriate male and female dog that you're going to choose to breed. Now, step three says, using the genotypes of each parent, illustrate the phenotypes of each below. So you have the picture here on this page of your male parent and your female parent. And you are to illustrate the phenotypes. Remember, the phenotype is the physical appearance. So you need to look at the genotypes or the genetic makeup of your two parents from the following page, did you choose male A, B, or C? And then look at what their phenotype would be based on the genotypes illustrated here. So for instance, if you chose male A and the fur length is capital L, capital L, well, what does that mean? Look above, capital L, capital L would refer to a phenotype of a long tail. So using your colored pencils or crayons, for your male, draw a longer tail on your male. Do that for each of the remaining genotypes and phenotypes in order to illustrate what your chosen male and your chosen female would look like based on their genotypes. Next step. It says on the next page, and that would be page 186, 
complete a Punnett square using the parent's genotype for each trait. So what do you do? Well, again, you've already selected the male and the female to breed, and now you have four Punnett squares. One Punnett square for each of the four traits. So put the male genotype, the, the, the male that you chose, put that genotype above, put the female genotype on the side, and then complete the Punnett square for each of the four characteristics that you selected from. Cool with that? Next. The next step says, and here's where the fun starts, in case it hadn't started already. The next step, step five reads, roll a die to determine the traits of the puppy. And so you've each been given a rolling die. You're going to roll it. Whoops, I just rolled it. And uh, for each of your Punnett squares, if you roll a number one, you choose the upper left genotype. Circle it. If you roll a number two, you choose the upper right genotype. Circle it. If you roll a number three, you choose the lower left, a lower uh, a four, uh, the lower right. And if you roll a five or a six, then no puppies are produced with that trait. Roll again and until you get a one, two, three, or four. You're basically going to be rolling the die at least four times for each of the four Punnett squares to select the appropriate genotype for each of those traits. Now, step six reads, looking at the puppy's genotype, illustrate its phenotype. Does it have the traits you desired? And uh, step seven if the puppy does not have the traits you desire, then go back and repeat steps five and six until it does. Step eight reads, illustrate each of the puppy's phenotypes below until you get the desired traits, then stop. So essentially what you're going to be doing is this. You're going to be completing each of the four Punnett squares. Then you're going to be illustrating, let me put the book correct here. You're going to be illustrating the four phenotypes from those Punnett squares on the first puppy. If it looks like the puppy you circled with the traits on top of the next page, then you're done. If not, then go back to the Punnett squares, roll the die again for each Punnett square to choose the genotype, and whatever the outcome is, illustrate that with your puppy. And keep on going down the list of puppies using your Punnett squares and the dice each time and see how many generations or how many attempts will it take for those two parents you selected to produce an offspring with the characteristics that you desired at the beginning. And we'll see how many times it takes. Show me when you get to that. And... Uh, answer the question there before you write your conclusion. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully you'll have some fun breeding some puppies this period. So that's it for the help video here. I'm going to say for now, bye-bye.